Hi there, I'm Eric. This project is my second time 3D modeling and printing a full set of laptop style keycaps. They look like, like this. Uh, first I'll explain why this video is called pop and click. So this is what is colloquially called a mechanical keyboard and they live separately from the actual computer. This is the first one that I've owned and the only one I've changed anything about. Customizing them is extremely easy and all I did was replace the keys here with a set of blank keys of a different color. Uh, to remove them you just use a, a tool like this and a little twist and pull it out just like that. So true mechanical keyboard enthusiasts can customize all sorts of stuff about these keyboards like shapes, colors, layouts, materials, all the bells and whistles you could possibly want. Keyboard keys in, in general are actuated by a switch. In this case, there's a little male X here, sometimes with a circle around it, and a female end on the keycap itself. If we look closely at this keycap itself, there's no overhangs or anything. And it looks like the four points on the corners are injection mold gates. And since I had first laid eyes on custom keyboards, I thought it would be really neat to do custom keycaps for laptops. So what I'll show you now is sort of the remnants of my first attempt. So here are the hinges that actuate the keys on a keyboard. There are two little plastic pieces that fit together and the little silicone cup here that presses down when the key itself is pushed down. There are four little points that this set of hinges links to the, the actual keyboard. And then there are four points where it touches the actual key itself here. Here's the top side of an original key, the alt key and the 3D printed key. If I flip this over, You can see there are two points here that I'm going to refer to as clasps and two pieces here that I'll refer to as mounts. I think I have to flip this around. So these two are now in the same orientation. So that whole process basically worked, but the results were sort of mixed. And the second time around, I'm going to give this a try with the Raspberry Pi 400. The Raspberry Pi is like a single board computer and what they've done is they've mashed it into a, into a keyboard and then put all the ports here on the back and uh, sort of given a more sort of standalone uh, machine. This is my sacrifice machine, uh, but really only the top piece is what's getting sacrificed and I didn't actually have to take off this keyboard piece, but it was interesting to see that this is a, a solid piece of metal. I think that's like ultrasonic welding or something like that. So the plastic is sort of melted in into this metal piece and you can't take it off without damaging it, but that's okay. So the reason that laptop keycaps, custom laptop keycaps aren't a thing is because there are multiple different versions of the same sort of mechanism going on here. Whereas in mechanical keyboards, they're, they're standardized. In laptop keyboard, keyboards, they're not. So if we look closely at this one, you can see that it's quite a bit different from this one. Even the orientation is different. This one goes up and down. This one goes side to side. Looks like they might even be different types of plastics or silicone in there for the cups. So they're not standardized and that's one of the reasons why uh, aftermarket laptop keycaps are not a thing. I had some issues with video formats when I was stripping all these keys off. So I'll just be able to show a quick time-lapse of that now.
reason that this video is called pop and click is because when you take one of these keys off, it makes a little pop and when you push it in, it makes a really satisfying click. I'll show you that right now. There's the pop. If we look at this, this is the G key. See there's little mounts here at the top and these clasps here at the bottom. So the mounts go in first and then the clips press down and then that's when it makes a little click. That's the process that I'd like to get through, except rather than getting the click from the OEM key, I'd like to get the click from a key that I 3D print myself. So that's video number one. That's the first mission. From here, uh, I'm gonna go take some of these keys and we're gonna draw them out. Here I have a hinge and key cap from my first attempt on the left, and a hinge and key cap for this attempt with the 400 on the right. To take a closer look, it helps to use a flashlight to show what's going on because these pieces are so tiny. There's not too much of a difference. All I can see is that the small mounting pieces appear to be reversed. First, I'll draw a quick picture of, of what I need to measure. So I need the, the height, the width, the distance down for these mounts, distance up for these clips, their distance from each other, and I can divide that and use that as the center point, and then the thickness of the wall of the key. So these two are now in the same orientation. I also need the, the height here of the, of the key off the page here. The next clip is going to be a time lapse. I'm going to use a set of just simple digital calipers to uh, get these measurements. You might be wondering why I didn't take measurements for any of these four pieces. That's because I already have prefabricated objects that I used on the last attempt that I can just resize to make work for this one. Now we take this over to the computer and start putting in some shapes in SketchUp.
now here in my messy garage and it is the final weekend in February. I have the 3D model from the previous clip on this USB key and the goal is to go from 3D printer to computer back and forth until I can get this K key a neighbor. Before us we have a 3D printer, an ultrasonic cleaner, a couple of bottles of resin for the printer, a UV curing box, keeping track of the temperature here, see it's a little bit too cold to print right now, and some airflow. This here is an AnyCubic Photon. It's still just under 20 degrees in here, but I'm gonna close the lid and start the print and just see what happens. It's been a few minutes now and I've, I've found that if you overcook these things then they get far too brittle. So this is the result. It's still a bit dirty but I think they just need some time. I'll give these a rinse in water and I'll see if they fit. Skipping the ultrasonic cleaner was probably a mistake, but it appears to have worked for the most part. All of the structures that are meant to be there are there. There's a little bit of what's called elephant's foot, where the base layers begin to smush. And you can see it's a little bit more yellow in there because the exposure was longer on those base layers. Also, you can see from this set here, maybe you can tell in this light, but the moment that they're out of the resin and they touch air, they start to go yellow a little bit, at least with this uh, standard resin. So now we can try and see if this fits next to K. We've lost some video quality because we're in the dark, but it's a little easier to see because there's no glare. But at the top, we've got those two little clip pieces. And at the bottom, we've got, or actually at the top, we have the things I was calling mounts. And at the bottom, we have the things I was calling clips. So. The idea is that they go in first at the top and then clip at the bottom, but this one doesn't fit. So these are the four points we're going for, here, 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 and here, and it looks like Looks like it shrunk a little bit. Oh, well I've got the little mounting bits sort of like they fall into place. 
but those clips definitely need to be closer to the to the wall. As I'm sure you saw, I printed out five and those were mainly just to verify that my build plate was even. So I spread them all out to make sure that they're all about the same width. And now is a pretty good opportunity for me to introduce you to my box of failures. Back to the drawing board. You may have noticed that it took me 12 versions to get to this keycap on the other keyboard. So I'm gonna do some Martha Stewart magic for the rest of the video to make this work. I'm gonna give this next one a shot. This is the second attempt. No, it's not gonna happen. Let's take a closer look. This one's definitely a lot closer. I'll use the flashlight trick again a little bit. You can see that the, the mounting pieces at the top kind of look like they engage, but the clips are still too far from the wall. So looking at this again, I'm gonna spread everything out a little bit more, and then taking a closer look here at the, the mounts, get that little piece of dust here, but it looks like it's the hinges sort of mashing up the triangular pieces there. So I'm going to make these mounting bits a little bit taller. Number four. It's starting to look like really right. It's not that bad. Everything just needs to be further apart again. Let's take another one. First. But it hits the wall, it hits the top of the keyboard here, so it can't engage any further, but it needs to a little bit further. And then that means that these clips need to go further down. Round five, this one is promising. That looks like the type of engagement I'm looking for. That was the click. So before I write a number on it, it's worth it to see it actually actuate up and down through the key. You can see that the four points here are all touching the keycap. In the next video, I'm gonna start working on the, the battle royale that needs to happen now to get all of the keycaps on this keyboard. So I've, I've been printing three at a time, so I've kept one, one works, and one has gotten stuck and failed. So I've kept, one of, uh, kept note of that. One of two has failed and that they fit. Next is to go through further iterations until all of them fit. In December 2020, I had basically given up on this project, but there were two Patreons who signed up and sort of reinvigorated, re-sparked, re-lit lit the, I'm, do, I'm doing keycaps again, I guess. Uh, so I've, I've printed out eight at 150% scale and I'm gonna send them to the next Patreons who want them. The next video is gonna be the Battle Royale. And after that, we're gonna look at localization. So putting the, which letters go where 
and uh, then, then they get a coat of paint and I hit them with a laser to cut out the pieces of paint where the letters need to be uh, and then they're backlit. That's sort of an unnecessary step here because we can't backlight this but maybe there's, maybe there's a way to do it and it's the best way I know how right now. So thank you very much for watching. I know this has been super long. I hope it was at least not totally boring and not big of a waste of time. That's about it. Thank you.